always comes first. Then there's our dear Rachel Miladjaja, who turns, uh, she's not afraid to state her age, she turns 60 today. Uh, I'm sure you remember Rachel, she was here, uh, dear Bumi, and you know her brother, Captain Horace Jaja, also is a regular uh, you know, guest on this on uh, my program. So happy birthday to all three. Uh, so hi, hi is, uh, I hope all of you are enjoying yourselves. Yes, uh, Mr. Akimomi, let's get down to business. One hour is a very short time. So you are the first vice president. Okay, by the way, we are on YouTube and we are on um, Facebook Live. So I'd like to stress that in case you want to tune in. So what's your antecedent in sports anyway? Uh, first of all, let me confess completely I don't know anything about sports than watching or culture dribble 10 people or the good old days when we beat your school. I remember in 1972 there about when we beat the school that you went to. Even though I'm an honorary member of that school, the school that we went to, uh, we beat you flat. I mean, that's with Matu and everything. So that's what's... That's, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like uh, somebody went to school. Yes. That they went to because they couldn't get into the movie college. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I take that. But let's get back to business. <laughs> Morning, so, Morning. so you've been in. You're a lawyer, by the way. That's correct. Yes, I have, you know your name came up as barrister, but I don't like adding barrister to the whatever. Uh, so you 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 you've been in sports all along. Yes, I have been. I've been. <coughs> excuse me. I've been in football um, for decades. Decades. I, yes. Since uh, when? I have always, um, I mean, I played football um, clearly, but in the administration of it, I think I started um, as the honorary legal advisor to the Lagos State Football ah, Association. Okay. And that was, I think, 1999. Uh, and that's where you got sucked in. Yes. Mm. Was it? Was it? Was the appointment out of a passion, or you, you, you know, just because you were a lawyer? You know, somebody just said, "Look, Mr. Kim, we can't be a lawyer," and then you got sucked in. No, no, I actually volunteered. Oh, you did? I actually volunteered to, to be uh, the legal advisor to um, the Football Association at the time. Mm. I had a few friends who were in there as um, the chairman and the vice chairman. And I knew, because I used to go there anyway. So I just one day said, look, you know, you guys need to have a lawyer. Uh, I can't afford it. I said, no, no, you don't have to pay. I'll, I'm gladly do it. No, you did it gratis. Yes. But now as the best vice president, you are paid. No, I'm not. Really? No, Am I dripping Nicky? He's not paid to. No, he's not. It's not a paying job. Oh, really? No, it's not. No. So all you guys have a nine to five job. Oh, certainly. But it's time consuming, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, and that is why um, a lot of us, at least I do, the way I work is that I have, I live by my iPad and, and my phones. Mm. Um, because you're on the move a lot of time, but you still need to get your, your day work done. Okay, maybe we should start from there. Do you think that officials should be paid so it becomes a full-time job? No. I, I think that the um, the staff of the Nigeria Football Federation um, should be paid. They should work there mm -hmm. and they should be efficient at their work and get things done. Um, and indeed, I think that there should be um, a slight tweak to the um, rules that mm -hmm. we, we walk by so that the Secretary General, General Secretary, has yes. a lot more, um, should I say power? Power, yeah. To as, as a chief executive. As chief executive. It's, it's there in, um, in writing somewhat, but I think it needs to be entrenched so that there is a lot more responsibility on the General Secretary um, of the Football Federation mm. as opposed to uh, the President. The President should be there Given you know, an, sort of oversight. Yeah, because and, I mean, uh, sitting down here, I, 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 if I did a, some kind of competition, I don't think I get ten people who know who the director general is. Everything had fallen, had you know, fallen on Amadu. Amadu Pendeke. He's not recontesting though. No, he's not though. Uh, he's not. Do you know why? Um, I think he has said his family and commitments and you know, um, those sort of things. I think. You I think, think it consumed a lot of his time? I think the. The question would have to be put to him, really. I know, yeah. I know. But what I'm saying so is if you know the pressures that are on him, you're ready to bear such things. Well, yes, I know the pressures on him. Um, I also um, intend to come in with my own I ideas as okay. to how to relieve those pressures. Um, because having been um, the vice president, I understand 
just those pressures. I also um, intend um, to give my general secretary a lot more uh, in terms of running the the federation within a certain ambit. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, and ensure that that way I can relieve pressures of myself. Third uh, is that um, there has to be a lot more use of technology. Um, okay. In term, uh, in, in to enable us, you know, uh, disseminate information, share information, take decisions, and finally, um, you know, we run what I call a top to bottom approach um, of administration of football, and we have done that for decades. And mm. I think that it should be the other way around, um, where it should be bottom up, which means that the job of the federation at the top. Mm is limited to, not limited, but focused on um, international matches, for example, international events, international plans, budgeting for the uh, um, NFF, uh, interfacing with government, interfacing with CAF, interfacing with FIFA, and generally at that top top level um, issue, commercial issues. Mm. But the football really needs to be played at the grassroots, at the state level, yes, and at the regions. So if we divide the, the football into two, top and bottom. And at the bottom, we, we the top, we budget for the bottom. So we give them um, X amount of money for the year. Mm. We're paid in tranches. Uh, co- co- correct me if I'm wrong. The We, we made an attempt way back then. Um, I think, let me quickly say that, you know, I told you I don't know much about these things. But from the outside, I think we've made an attempt way back we had very good school competitions in the days of Principal Cup and uh, in the days of Youth Fund. Was that what it's called? Yeah, Youth Fund, th- yes. Those competitions. And this Youth Fund was one that produced the likes of Kano, uh, Okocha, and so Am I right? Well, <laughs> those, it, it produced some people. Youth, youth yes. <laughs> yes. And we did have a vibrant, but we seem to have, after Westerhof, uh, can I comfortably say that we seem to have lost the, the initiative for that and we just generally concentrate on producing 11 players for the Eagles and some reserves. Well, what I, what I would say is that um, there has been a drop in the level or high level and the propensity to churn out um, top level players at the gra- from the grassroots. Grassroots, yes. Um, and it is where I think we should go back to. Um, I think also we need to do it even better than we did it then because now we have um, a lot more resources um, at, at our fingertips and I'm talking of just money I'm talking mm. of um, the ability to get data ab- ability to use the data we have ability to be able to run um, this this um, competition simultaneously um, across the country and we've, we've you know we've done it before and mm. I believe we can do it again we tried for a few years to do it with um, the future Super Eagles uh, tournament that we had um, NFF sponsored by Zenith Bank at the time, um, and it showed that it can be done. Mm. But I think that we need to institutionalize um, the concept of bottom up, of grassroots football, producing um, the players, and not just the players, but the scouts, the coaches, the medical personnel, um, and all you know affiliated um, personnel to the sport. Mm. They can be trained from the grassroots. And then they rise to the top. So the best will get to the top. Well, this sounds quite noble, but how do you fund it? Um, funding um, for me has, has been an issue uh, that needs to be addressed head on. What happens, um, what's happened in the past few years is that this board has moved um, f- sponsorship um, from where it was to a really, really, really high level in comparison to where we were. So if you asked the question eight years ago, yes. that you want to do all of these things, you want to put players in good hotels and put them, you know, uh, be able to fly them properly, and you know, this, the question would have then been, how do you fund this thing? Yes. But we funded them. Um, in, in going forward, we need to move away or further up of the ladder. Now, sponsorship, in my view, cannot sustain where we want to go. And therefore, we need to get investment in football. In football. Um, so rather than the sponsorship being the, the cake itself, 
it would be the icing on the cake. And there are many people who are prepared to invest in football if the, the conditions are right. Yeah, we did have that in the past, in the days of stationary stores, uh, Lake Salami, ICC, right. and, and people like that, who would be the Rangers. Yeah. Um, now I think you have just like MFM and a few other teams. Our National League, I don't even know if, if, it, is, if, it, is, if it exists at all. And it's distressing. And I'm going to hold you to that. I hope you become president. I'd like by the time I bring you in after one year, I'll be able to put on my TV instead of watching some South African league. I don't know. I'd like to watch. I, as a kid, well, the only thing we knew about the Premier League then was those who were playing, uh, playing pools. Yes. We, <laughs> didn't, we didn't even have an idea. It was later. And I said, wait a minute. This is what it was all about. You know? Yes, but I, I, in, in those good days, you had Rangers, you had stationary stores. You had the ECN, Nepal, and so on and so forth. Well, Do we? Are you going to give us a timeline where you think that might happen? Well, um, first of all, let me let me um, say one thing. You see, the the league management mm. is a separate body from the NFF. Oh, really? Yes. Even though the NFF owns football in inverted commas, you put a body in place that runs the league. So, for example, the Premier League in England. Yes, is run by the Premier League, but they have the English FA, who's okay. Yeah, so, um, luckily for me, I have been um, on the board of the league management uh, company before, okay. and at that time we had um, football on TV, we had on DSTV at the time. Yes. Um, so, various things that happened um, where we don't have it on TV anymore, um, and it's not my place at on you know ready to talk about details of what, what happened within the LMC, but I assure you um, that that is a priority because football is about eyeballs. It, if mm. nobody's watching, then you might as well yes, you know, yes. waste your time. And we had the experience of that when there was COVID and they okay, didn't have fans. Yes, so we saw yes, how yes, drab, yes, yes, how yes, drab yes. the matches were. Yes, they yes. played the same football but it was very drab because they had no, no um, hmm. eyeballs watching. So we need to have that. And also, it comes back to the issue of investment. Mm. When people are prepared to invest in football, all of those things would happen naturally. But how, how do we protect our players from being taken abroad at a very young age? They take them to Eastern Europe, give them peanuts. That, of course, must have affected us somewhat. Uh, you'd find that uh, the lure of going abroad in the first instance always, you know, so we have this massive movement of, of massive aspiration of young people wanting to go abroad. How are you going to... Well, I think that, you know, there, there's not a lot um, you can do about people having aspirations to go abroad. To go abroad, yes. Um, we've had it with, in, in various other professions, you know, we've had the technology that people so are going to Canada. So football is not going to be an exception. Yes. But what you need to do is to give them an alternative, an opportunity, a viable alternative um, mm -hmm. locally so if they know that they can get to play in the leagues and there's the possibility of them rising to the very top that hope alone mm. is what will keep them here and to try their best to get to the top if they know that getting to the top here they can actually get to the super eagles as well then that also would help them so it's it's like any other profession we have lawyers who have gone abroad. We have doctors who've run up, run away. If I remember when we were young, we have this Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, yeah, Andrew. Yeah. Um, so it's always been there. It's not peculiar to football, but the fact remains that we have doctors who remain here who are very, very good at their job. We have lawyers and we have footballers as well. So we need to create the local uh, environment where it's a possibility for me to stay behind as a footballer mm. rather I want to go abroad. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that sounds quite noble. I, I'd do anything to get my childhood back. You know, I'd like to go to the stadium uh, too late with my sons now, this is a grown up, at least with my grandchildren. Like my dad used to take me to Nikon yeah. Stadium with that culture, the ICC, the excitement. Yeah. Now, you put that to you, you have to do that from the protection. Isn't there anything we can do uh, to protect to stop this onslaught on our people with foreign La Liga, Premier League. It's nice to watch and so on and so forth, but hey, we have to develop our own. Well, we need to, uh, you, you know? Yes, we need to work with various bodies. Yes. Um, uh, Broadcasting Corporation, for example, 
um, the TVs, the licenses, and all, all of those things. Mm. Now, if you look at Spain, um, you have them show their, their uh, matches at a certain time so that it doesn't clash with uh, leagues of leagues other countries. Of, mm. So those are the things that we need to look at. There are many ways around all these issues. We started at one time to, start to have um, Monday night football. Um, and I remember one in particular that we had in, in, um, in Agege Stadium. It was spectacular. Yeah. Um, so those are sort of things we need to do, but a lot of it's tied to the eyeballs. To mm. watching on TV. I like the way you put it, the eyeballs. Yes. It's as if you don't need the humans, you just need the eyeballs. Yeah, just need the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> and we assume that if the eyeballs are there, the humans will be there. <laughs> yeah, so, so those are the things that, that, that you can tweak to ensure that there's protection. Mm. Because we also need, don't forget, we have competition laws as well. So yes. there's that balance between um, all of that. But there's certainly um, ways. And you know, the issue of grassroots football has a great impact. Imagine that the boy down the street is he plays for the local team, rises to play for the regional team, eventually ends up in a national team or a national club side. Mm. Um, people in that neighborhood want to identify with that individual player. Yes. And that drives, again, the eyeballs mm. to... to the, 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 I, I'm hoping that if you do become president, one of the things you will do is go around the country talk to state governors. Um, I grew up in Yaba, for example, and um, I remember the good old Evans Square. Yeah. Then you, you also have Lagos Island, you had Campus Square. Yeah. This is where people like Harun and so, this is where they started. But you find in Lagos now, apart Evans Square, I don't know, I think they have more parties there than games, I'm not too sure. Uh, uh, so I, I hope you'll be able to do that to convince uh, 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 governors as well. It's just not about projects, 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 and flyovers and things like that. We need to develop. Football uh, here is a good industry. Had I known, I'd have concentrated more on the little football that I could play. <laughs> well, I, there's one thing I want, I want to um, maybe not disabuse your mind yes. you know, about this. Yes, it's all well and good to speak with the governors yes. and explain to them these things. Yes. Right? But it's even more important to Create an environment where the private sector can okay. invest. For invest, example, yes. if you look at the um, Adegunle um, st um, Stadium, well, it used to be where all of this place uh, is called Barakara, yes, the ground where a lot of them used to play. But now we have a private investor that has taken over the, the space, built a wonderful complex. I think there are fourteen or sixteen. Um, a stadium there, five a side, seven a side, a full Ooh. side pitch, and that's in Najegule. In Najegule, if you get that, you wouldn't believe in yeah. the same Maracana. Now, that project apparently is going to be multiplied. Now, if we have that multiplied again outside of Lagos in various other places, yes, players, young players will play football and we will get what we're looking for. So, mm. It's important. Okay, I'm speaking to Mr. Sheyi Akiomi. He's the first vice president of the NFF, and uh, he, he would love to be the president of the NFF if the elections are coming up on Friday, uh, anything to go by. The results will be out by this time next week. Yes. On Saturday morning. Yes. Uh, okay, maybe if you win, we'll bring you in again. <laughs> I'm going to open up our line 0700-993-993-993. And we're going to also the female line zero one four six five seven one nine zero. The usual, please call from a quiet place. Uh, package your thoughts together so that you can, you know, give your reactions or your questions or whatever in just that one minute that we allocate. Uh, oh yeah, I think I have two minutes, so I can take one caller. No, you have more than that. I have more than that. They are very generous. That's why I like you. Uh, yeah, let's speak to first caller here. Hello, good morning. Hello? 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 Hello, good morning, sir. Morning. Well done, sir. Uncle Jimmy? Yes. Uh, I heard you mention one name this morning. I just want to say uh, one or two things to him. Dr. Fari, that is 80 years today. Yes. Uh, he's one of our great, great persons. Uh, uh, okay, thank you. 
Thank you very much. I want to send our greetings to him. Okay. Happy birthday. I'll Christmas. tell him. I'll tell him. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, sir. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Morning. Yeah, my name is Kade Mogaji. Hey, APC. <laughs> good morning, Uncle Jimmy. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Um, good morning, the barrister. Good morning. Yes. Um, <laughs> sir, you know a lot of we football supporters that are not happy with what is happening in the, FF, in the NFS. Mm. And um, you are actually part of the NFS. Mm. Um, because I remember eight years ago, I, uh, when Amaju Pinnick was coming up, he gave, promised a lot about grassroots football, how he was going to. And it, it seems like it's even the same line, from bo- um, bottom to top. Exactly. And as the Lagos um, Football, you're the chairman of Lagos Football Association. Yes, yeah, so as the chairman, I, I personally think you probably had the opportunity to do some of these things you're saying you want to do at the federal in Lagos State, mm. because I don't, I don't see it in Lagos State. The leagues, the Principals Cup, yeah, we have a little bit of, a, they, they still play Principals Cup, but not as much as it used to be, the Ivy League football in Lagos. Lagos alone, Lagos FA can, Uncle Jimmy asked a fantastic question, how is it going to be funded? Lagos can fund a football league, and it's not happening. We don't need all the terrestrial radio stations or TV to actually put our information football out there. All you need is social media. Okay, okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't get the name, but I think that um, first of all, yes, you're right that Lagos State, um, the Lagos Football Station, gave me an opportunity to do what. Um, I said I'll do it at national level. Indeed, the reason why I was going to do it at national level is because we've done it at Lagos State level. Um, mm-hmm. You say that you don't see that this has have happened. We have just finished a, a four-month um, um, eco-football league. We have rebranded the Lagos State Football Association, the football we do in Lagos. For the past seven years, we have been acknowledged as number one in grassroots in Nigeria football. We have more players that have gone from our bottom uh, teams to the top, to the Super Eagles and Super Falcons. Indeed, there is no national um, um, league team in the, in the female sector that doesn't have at least one um, young lady from the Eco Football on, on the 13s or the 15s. We have done all of these things. Yes, it's very difficult because of funding. And you have a peculiar position with. The state FAs. The state FAs don't get any budget from the um, state government. The state FAs have to compete and actually compete with the state um, sports commission or sports ministry. So it's very difficult. But despite all of that, we have we are proud to say that we have done more than was expected of us in the circumstances. So it's not quite correct to say that we haven't done uh, these things at the state level. We have been adjudged clearly far above uh, any other state and not because we have more money because we have done more things than most because we don't get money from the government so it's not as if we have oh, government money don't forget also when people say oh there's sponsorship in lagos there's much more expense in lagos mm-hmm. so for every one naira <laughs> that you get in lagos you are spending much more on what you want to do than somebody from another state so i think maybe um, I'd, I'd like you to maybe have a, a bit more look at what has happened and do a bit more research and ask. Um, so maybe we haven't sounded out, out as much as we should, but certainly the facts are there. And that is what gives me the impetus to want to go uh, to the Okay, we, we'll take a short break now. Uh, and when we do come back, I'll continue my discussion uh, with Mr. Kimomi and also take your your, rema- your you know questions and remarks. So don't go away, we'll be right back. The discourse with Jimmy Disson. The discourse with Jimmy Disson. Continues in a moment. They don't disconnect your line. Sick of say.
Our dear friend, a few of our friends have testified to that. But jokes apart, the once you say NFF chairman, one of the things, two things occur to Nigerians, and that is the Super Eagles and the foreign coach. Whether so, first and foremost, do you think that we must necessarily have a foreign coach? No, I think that we we need to necessarily have. The best coach, the good coach, yeah. That we can find my for feelings too. Yeah. So, um, if we, of course we we are able to get a, um, a coach who is local and who is good enough mm. uh, and who is stands head and shoulders at least at par with anybody else mm -hmm. who applies for the job. Yes. But I, I think that the fact that you're Nigerian should give you an edge. Exactly. You'd be more uh, patriotic. Yes. Um, so and it's not that we don't we have not had Nigerian coaches. We have I had, see. we have had Nigerian coaches and who have done well over the years. Um, but there are various um, things we look at at various times in choosing who the coach is. Mm. Um, for example, we had uh, um, Keshi who did extremely well. Yeah. We've had um, Eguavon. We've had uh, um, Amunike. We have. I'm a catch. We've had people at that level, but it's the times differ. The needs at various places at various times differ. We had Olise, um, and we we know what happens. It's not everything that happened behind the scenes that one can publicly come um, forth to say. But he seemed to be a bit controversial, though. Y yes, um, maybe that's because of his person. The po person possibly is, doesn't but have the right temperament. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I don't not, know. Yes. But my, my my view is that at any point in time, yes. we must look at the parameters we have and choose the best person we can find for that. If we have uh, people at par, I would go um, for a Nigerian for coach. Nigerian coach. Do you have? You might not necessarily need to state the person, mm. but do you have one or two people in your sights uh, to say that? Okay, fine. If I do. Um, get you know, get this shot at it. Uh, this might be one person I might be thinking of. Do you have yeah, anybody? Yes, like there, that? There, there are many, there are many Nigerian coaches who okay. um, are, are able. You know, we also have the Nigerian factor um, in the Vatican covers again. That sometimes where it should benefit the Nigerian coach um, works against the Nigerian coach. Um, so we've had in history. Where we've had, you mentioned Westerhoff. Yes. And Westerhoff had apparently direct pathway to the vice president of Nigeria for government. Uh, yeah, of Nigerian yeah. government. Government then. I go. Yes. So if if that was Nigerian, he probably wouldn't have that access, uh, direct access. Mm. Um, you know, and various things come into play. So there are reasons why you choose this or that. But yes, the answer to your question, mm. I do have a number of Nigerian coaches who I believe have the capability to drive the national team. Mm. Why aren't we at this year's World Cup? I'd like to get your own perspective on it. Because we didn't do well um, against Ghana in particular when we came well, to Why Nigeria. didn't we do well? Uh, the story is very long. You know, there are many things. We had the team. Mm. Um, 
Did we have the expertise? In, in, in my, my opinion, we had the team. Um, football just didn't work out. Uh, I think that's the best way to put it. Because we had the team to not only even beat them in Ghana, because I was in Ghana to watch the match, mm. uh, and also to do in, uh, to be, at least draw with them in Nigeria. We had the team, we had um, we had everything going. The, sup- the NFF gave the the team and the coaches everything that they should have. They got all the allowances, everything. Yes, they they had all the agreements um, that we had. With them, with, with, the, with, them. with the boys, with, yeah. yes, were were intact. So um, the the on the day, it just I think it just didn't work out, and um, and it, it's it's unfortunate. It's heart wrenching, um, but it's what it is. We must make sure that we never, ever find ourselves in this position again. Well, I, I mean, I I would um, I- even if you don't win matches, sometimes I, one would appreciate. What would call what you would call a good performance? Um, uh, you, you might not win football. Have, the other day, Liverpool Liverpool were beating for you know something just went wrong, uh, but that was a one-off. Mm. Um, but what do you think is a standard of play? How, how would you look at it now at national level? I think that uh, uh, a standard of play at national level is not um, it's not where we should be. We should find ourselves. And there are various reasons um, what I could adduce for that. Mm. Again, it, it's part of it is the issue of having our, the passion that comes from somebody who started from the bottom uh, mm-hmm. and rose to the top. Um, it has to do with our league, the standard of our league, and the players who come out of there. And you know, you may be good enough, you may be talented enough, but there's much more to football than Everybody talent. That, yeah. So. For example, you see some local players are called to the national team and they're overawed mm. by, by the environment and of the other players who have come from abroad. Yeah. Uh, such that they just don't perform at the, at the tr- training as to the standard that we've seen at the league, at the end of the league. Mm. And people are wondering, this guy is so good, why is, he not in, why is he not in the team? But the coach only chooses you based on what you do in training. Don't you also think that there's also the attitude of the, the foreign-based players who see it, it would appear, excuse me if I'm wrong, you know, I'm mm. not into this thing, but who would seem to have some bias against the local players? You know, like. No, at all. I mean, I've been. Okay, so I imagine they're not ego driven at all. No, I've been to the um, training that you can imagine numerous times. I've been to the camp, I've been tra- yeah, no. traveled with them. Um, and I would say that, you know, in the camp, contrary to what some people think, um, there's a lot of camaraderie. There is, you know, and the, there's no. Yes, uh, in the old days, I've been there uh, when, you know, there's a bunch of players who think they're uh, the elites. Yes, yes, um, we have that. Yes, but um, we don't have Excuse that me. anymore. <laughs> yeah. we, really, we really don't have that anymore. We we actually have a group of players who are bonded together. Even when a new player comes in, they welcome the way they welcome that player. It's it's very very impressive. So I, I don't think it's an issue of ego. Mm. But what what's the relationship between the NFF and the government? Um, I'm sure you do. You would agree that you do have some clashes once in a while. People in government wanting to wield influence on who plays what, and then uh, you do then have. I, I'm a bit confused about the relationship between the NFF, for example, and the Ministry of Sports. Hmm. Uh, uh, the the at certain times the minister of sport takes the lead, and we don't see that in other countries. Uh, I don't even know the minister. Do they have a minister of sports in the UK, by the way? <laughs> yes, they do. they do. I don't know him. Hmm. Nobody knows him. You know, the hmm. FA handles all that. So, what's your relationship with the government? Well, I think that the first thing that people need to understand. You know, I've had this argument. I've heard people make these arguments about interference, intervention, and yes. all of these things, and. They just, in my opinion, you know, cloud the entire space with, not maybe not irrelevant, uh, but uh, with discussions and arguments that are not at the heart of the matter. The thing is this, the Nigerian Football Federation runs football like any other um, um, sports federation in Nigeria. But it's not a government agency, it's, it's independent of yes, the government. Yes, it's, it's actually, it's hybrid. 
um, and I'll tell you the reason why it's hybrid. Um, there is the law. The law may be, it's archaic and it hasn't been repealed. Um, so it's probably the only sphere in Nigeria where there is law, but the government has said, you know, we we'll allow you to run uh, your football through statutes because we want to play in the World Cup, for example. Uh, and FIFA says, if you don't run your football according to the statutes, we can't allow you to play in, in FIFA. Make it as simple as I can. Yes. Um, so the government has allowed that to happen. So there's a sort of hybrid situation um, without actually, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. without actually having the um, legal structure to strengthen um, the, that, position. that position. So Nigerian football, the, when the Super Eagles tra- travel to play football, they wear the Nigerian jersey. They hoist the Nigerian flag. Flag. Therefore, the ministry has to take responsibility for for Nigeria and Nigeria's image and Nigeria's um, interface with international uh, countries. But the Nigerian football, the football itself, is run um, by um, the NFF. Going forward, there has to be that synergy, legal synergy created uh, between the two bodies. Uh, my opinion, you need to repeal the old acts. Um, I don't even really believe that we need to have a, a new law that guides everything. It just needs to say Nigerian football is run according to the statutes of the Nigerian Football Federation. Isn't that interference predicated on funding? Um, um, it would be nice to see an NFL that is fina- completely financially independent. Would that ever, ever be? Well, I, I don't know that there's any country that has that complete uh, independence, independence yeah. in terms of funding. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, as I said now, Nigeria football is Nigerian. Yes. So the, I believe that there should be grants. I think that football is a national property and a very important one at that. Uh, it can do things that many other sectors can't do. Like we have in Nollywood and, and, and all these things and music. Yeah. So it has 